Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? You know what, Jared? Yeah. I am doing fantastic. Week one is upon us here. It is. Uh, this Thursday, we have Know Your Enemy. Know Your Enemy Akron. And this Friday, we have our very first Sloop picks of the season. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But before we do that, it's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. All right. Got that out of the way. So today, today we are going to be doing our yearly over unders. Yeah. Um, if you're, yeah, if you're new here, we do uh, every week before uh, as part of know your enemy every week as part of know your enemy. Um, one of our mods whose name is Austin. And if you've been watching for a long time, Austin has uh, guest hosted on this show in the past as well. Uh, he provides us with 10 over unders for the uh, upcoming game. That being said, at the beginning of the season, he gives us a monster list of over unders. For. Uh, the entire season, and that's what this episode is. This this is the uh, this is this is the big over under. This is the over. This is this is the sh this is this is Austin's show. We are just living in it. Austin created an incredible list of overs and unders for us to go through for the start of the season. So he calls us the he calls us the over under extravaganza 2024 edition. Yeah. So let's waste zero more time. But I do, I do want to say before we go right into this, Jared, Team Chaos is 1-0 already for the season. Yeah, they are. 2-0 uh, if you count what was just handed down from the NCAA onto Michigan's doorstep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll go deep, deep into that just because there's a lot of over-unders that Austin got here, but they have 90 days to respond. And if anybody can do math... That 90, 90th day is the day before the game. So. Hey, Michigan, maybe don't procrastinate on that homework and get it turned in before that. Or or don't. Yep. Don't, don't take my advice. I don't care. I don't care for that. That team up north. All right, Kyle, let's let's get into the over unders. All right. So he, he did put a note in here before we started here. All of these stats that he's about to do these over unders is averages for a 12 game season. So what what is it? How many? 16 games is it now? They could play no 17. What? Hold on. So there's 12. It's the, the regular season. Yeah, yeah. 13, 14, 15. Yeah, 16. They're uh teams could play two teams will play be playing uh 16 games this year. Potentially. Well, it, yeah, because they wouldn't, the champions of the conference wouldn't necessarily. Well, I, actually, actually, the most of the team could play 17 because if you got one where they're not in okay. a bye week, 17. Oh. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying the two teams that make the national championship game won't necessarily play in conference title games. Mm, yeah. That, that's all I'm saying. You know what? All right. Let's. These are for the 12 regular season games. Let's stay on. Let's right. stay on. Right. on first task one, here, we're gonna, yep. First one here. Of course, it's always about the quarterback, isn't it? Will Howard. Will Howard interceptions thrown for the year. Six and a half. I'm going under on that. Um, very senior quarterback, very experienced quarterback. Um, he has thrown a fair amount of interceptions while at Kansas State. Mm -hmm. But, he, you know, I think he was forced to do more at Kansas State. I don't think he'll be forced to do more at Ohio State. Yeah, uh, I, I think he, he has the ability to be. You know, he's not going to have to score a thousand points like he had to do at Kansas State. And, he, and he's going to be he's going to be able to rely on his wide receivers to make plays and his running backs to make plays more than he had to at Kansas state. So, um, yeah, I I'm going to go under here. I, I think it's like four on the season, four or five. 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, good number there. I was five is kind of the number I'm thinking of there. Uh, he threw 10 last year at, at Kansas state. But if I'm looking at last year's, uh, last year's stats, uh, Kyle McCord, uh, threw for six interceptions and Devin Brown did throw one interception for a team of seven, but Kyle McCord six. And with, I agree with everything that Jared said, I'm not going to ask a whole lot of Will Howard just because of the talent that this offense has here. You give the ball off to your two headed beasts in the backfield there. And you got some great receivers to easily get the ball to and let them do their work there. Yeah. Under. All right. Next question. Sure. Caleb Downs forced turnovers over under five and a half as I'll start with this one as, as much as and deservedly so as, as much as we hear about Caleb Downs and how great yeah. he is and how, how much of a game changer he's going to be or our team's going to really try to throw it his way. <laughs> I, our, I really don't, I really don't think so. Our team's going to throw it that way, throw it anywhere towards him. No, four fumbles do also count, but, yes. but here's the thing. Six turnovers forced is a lot. Especially when you, I mean, I'm, con, I'm really working under the assumption that this Ohio state team is going to force a lot of three and outs. This team is going to the D I don't feel like the defense is going to be, I feel like the offense is going to be very run heavy, very eat up the clock. E, um, I, I I just don't necessarily see. So last year, last year I, as a true freshman I, at Alabama, he had yeah. three. He had he forced one, forced one fumble and two interceptions. Yeah, and I guess the point is, I don't expect the defense to be on the field that much. One and two, and this is going to be a reoccurring theme for a lot of the defensive individual defensive over unders. One. The Ryan Day's already said that they're going to rotate the defense a ton to make sure they're still fresh for the postseason and for Michigan. Um, and that, too, when the defense is this stacked, it's hard for any individual player to rack up a bunch of stats. Yeah, agreed. If you see a so defense where, like, one guy has twice the number of tackles as the next guy below him. That says more about the other 10 guys than it does about the one guy sometimes. So yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go under that's just it, six force turnovers is a lot for any one that player. Is. That is. All right. Speaking of new shiny, shiny folks in the, the Ohio State locker room here. Jeremiah Smith. Seven and a half touchdowns as a true freshman. You know, like it's it's hard for me. It's hard for me to sit here, Jared. And. Pick the over on this. Just like all the hype is like, ooh. Ooh, this shiny freshman, he's going to come in here and just, just, just absolutely dominate everybody, destroy everybody. Junior, like people who who are juniors, seniors, redshirt seniors, transfer seniors, like being able to come in as an 18, 19 year old and dominate those kind of people. Um, yeah, he's going to. I'm, I'm yeah. picking the over. I agree. Um, I, I, I think, and and, 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 I, and I, you know, and if we're I, talking about 12 and I say games. that with a lot of. And I say that with a lot of respect because, I mean, there's a lot of talent that Hossett's going to come up against, um, but man, just he 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 is a once in a generation type of of a wide receiver. Just the way he's built, the way that his his physicality is, his size, just just absolute monster. Yeah, I'll take the over. That's totally fair. Um, I agree on the over. I mean, eight is, I don't think necessarily a lot. Um, 
for a guy who's expected to be like on the field, you know, a lot like he he is the starting wide receiver on one side. I don't think that's I don't think you're asking a lot. And I think it's worth noting that it simply says touchdowns here. So if he gets involved in punt or kick return, um, you know, he could also run a ball in. He could also maybe throw a ball in. I don't know. Like it doesn't specify here. So I'm counting all touchdowns. Eight. I think eight is a achievable number. I'm going to go over. In, in, in including returns, Jared. I, I said that. <laughs> Ohio State team sacks is the next one. 37 and a half. That's a lot. <laughs> that's that's a lot. I'm I'm looking at quickly. I'm trying to look at what their stats was as a team last year. I don't know if I can pull that real quick. Um probably not real quick. Um but I'm I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go under. 37 and a half just seems like a lot. Here it is. 28. It's- 28 last year, 28 last year. Uh, I will say that I think the secondary is going to be better this year. I don't think that's a, a, a huge stretch. I think the defense is going to be better this year. Um, again, I don't think they're going to be on the field a lot. Hmm. So I think that will hurt things. Um, you're looking at like over, you're looking at over three sacks a game at this number. Uh, the, the book on Ohio State, especially in the Big Ten for a decade now feels like, you know, avoid getting sacked at all costs. You know, don't hold the ball very long. Uh, Big 10 teams don't let Ohio State get sacks. They know they have to get rid of the ball in under two seconds. I'm going to go under here as well. Like it's uh, a nine sack improvement seems like a huge improvement but also doable. I mean, I agree it's doable. I'm not saying it's mm-hmm. impossible. It's a good number from Austin. Um, it just feels high, especially, like I said, because I don't necessarily expect the defense to have a, a relatively a ton of snaps this year. Like, I just don't think they're going to be on the field all that much. I think they're going to force a lot of three and outs. It, it's hard to rack up a bunch of stats if the other team isn't snapping the ball, you guys also have to keep in mind for all of these stats, college football games are going to be shorter this year. New clock mm-hmm. rules are shortening the games. We're going to see a markdown in individual stats like these. Um, I'm going to be going under a lot because of that. Yeah. Last time, Again, last time especially on the defense. I don't think I expect, I mean, I don't know how you'd find the, uh, you know, how many total snaps did the defense play last year for Ohio State? Add in rotation. Yeah, no, no, don't. Add in, you know, Day saying there's going to be a deeper rotation. Add in the fact that I think those total snaps are going to be reduced by a lot, not just because this defense is going to be so good, although that is a very big reason, but also snaps per game are going to be down across college football this year. We're going to see a bunch of numbers come down to earth a little bit. Yep. Last time Ohio State got over that 37 and a half, 2019. And a large thanks of that was because of Chase Young, who had 16 and a half that year. He was not a human being. Low snaps and teams will probably want to throw quick. Always. That's the book on Ohio State. Always, always, Mm -hmm. always. Shout out to David Hamilton, who had a monster year that year, too, at defensive tackle. All right. Um, players with a rushing touchdown. Six and a half players. So we Is need to get to half? seven. Yeah. Seven players? Seven well, hold on. Let's, let's stop and think about this. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. stop and think about this. You got Will, have, Will Howard and, you know, I think Devin Brown ends up getting a rushing touchdown at some point this year. Sure. You got Trey. Trey Judkins Judkins. Um, that's four. You need four more. So you could probably throw James peoples in there. Three more Jared. I know math is not your strong suit, but no, I named four. Yep. You need three more. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was seven and a half. That's my bad. 
All right, we need three more. <laughs> so you throw James Peoples in there. You throw Sam William Dixon in there. And then like a random wide receiver rushing touchdown. Like, I, I think it's. I think it's totally possible. You know, you get some sort of end around or something, uh, a, a pitch back or something to a Mecca, to Ennis, to someone. I think it's totally plausible that something like that happens. Um, I'm still going to go last under, year, but I think the number makes, I think it's a good number. Yeah. Yeah. Last year it was six. 2022 was seven. And in 2021, it was five. So, yeah, I'm going to go under. Great, great number. Great number. But I'll go, I'll go under six and a half players with a rushing touchdown. Gangland in the chat points out maybe Sand gets a rushing touchdown as well. Hussey doesn't really go y'all are deep. Also Hussey doesn't really go go deep in in the uh, in the uh, quarterback quarterback room. By the way, yeah, don't sleep on on Keenholtz. Like I, I don't necessarily think Sayin's the third quarterback in. For the record. All right, next one, Jared. We have Ohio State wins by fifteen points or more. Eight and a half is the over under. And I, I had to look at I had to look at the schedule a couple of times here and going through the games. I apparently here. didn't make one for that. That's okay. Okay. It's all right. All right. Let, let's just go through them and, and uh say yes or no. Akron. Okay. Akron, yes. Sure. Western Michigan, yes. yes. Marshall, yes. Can, can I can I can I can I to me, I think the interesting here is the four game run. Sure. I, I, okay. I'm going to say yes on every single game except that. But I think we as long as we just need to look at that four game run, because okay. if you have to do it nine times to win. Which means you have three times where you can't. Yep. So let's 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 look at the ranked t- or let's look at the, the popular teams here. So. Home to 25, Iowa. I'm going to say yes. Weirdly enough, I'm going to say yes, too. Okay. Iowa's defense is going to uh, be really good this year, but I don't at, know if it matters. At Oregon, at Oregon, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. All right, so that's one. Uh, home to Nebraska. I'm only saying that that's, because they're a big they're a big question mark team this year. Well, so. it, it also where they sit in Ohio State's schedule Yep. Because it's uh-huh. a part yep. of a really competitive, really tough four game run in the middle of the season for Ohio State. We don't know how good Nebraska is going to be. There's a lot of hype, but we really don't know. So Nebraska is a really good maybe. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. But I'm going to say no. I, I think I think currently it's a it's going to be a close game. I think Hossie wins by 10, 12 points or something like that. But I'm going to say no to that one. Uh, at Penn State, that that's always I'm gonna say no to that. That's, one. A, that's always a tough. That's always a close game at Happy Valley. There, yeah, I'm gonna say no there. And then home to Michigan, I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, yeah I'm not worried about Michigan this year. We'll beat them by more than 15. Yep. So it's, it's the four so game of, run of Oregon, Iowa, Nebraska, Penn State. I don't, I don't think that's the correct order. But that's the four game run that I think is key here. And yep. I think that they can get I think they can win by 15 in two of those games, which puts us over the mark for me. Yep. I'm going over. Yep. I'm saying. Yep. I'm saying over as well. Yep. All right. Uh, Devin Brown acid temps at 34 and a half. It's a lot. He did 20. He did 28 last year. I, and I, I'm going under. I'm going under on that. Uh, yeah, I feel like when he comes in and I feel like, again, Ryan Day has talked about rotating his players a lot. You know, we might see Devin. We might see the second string come in a little bit quicker this year, especially again, if the defense is good. Um, but I feel like when Devin Brown comes in, he's going to be running the ball a lot like it'll be in clock killing time. So I agree. I'm going to go under. Yep. 
All right. Uh, all right. Before we go into the next one here, uh, I'm just going to take a quick ad break. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to, if you want to um, skip out on all these ads, head on over to the sloopcast.com where you can catch all of our different links to our YouTube page, to our Discord server, which is uh, discord.thesloopcast.com, our merch store, uh, our 7071 merch store, and all, all other type of links in there. So again, the Sloopcast... But to specifically skip the ads, you need to sign up for Patreon. You do. Patreon.thesloopcast.com. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With that being said, we'll go ahead and kick off to our ad and we'll be right back. And we're back. What's the next question, Kyle? Yes, sir. It is James. By the Peoples. way, did we ski? Did we? Uh, I think we skipped one. OSU longest pass completion. Uh, we did. Yes. Let's. Ohio State longest pass completion at seventy five point five yards. Here's the thing: you only need to do it once. <laughs> it all. You only got to do it once, which which makes this question kind of interesting. You know, you you look to potentially do this. Here, here's the problem. It has to be over 75 yards. Right. Where do you yep. get the ball? Typically. Like you get a touchback or something, right? You get the ball at like the 20. Mm -hmm. So like it has to it has to be like that first play. Like, I, I don't know how many opportunities Ohio State's going to have to complete a pass that would be over 75 yards, that would be 76 yards or more. That, to me, is a big issue here. And when you do get those opportunities, when field position, you know, really starts to factor in, you're going to be playing against better defenses where getting a 76 yard touchdown is going to be considerably harder. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of the crux of the longest play over under, right? How often yeah. against Akron are, you know, cause you're going to be dominating the field position game. How many times yeah. are you going to it get to actually complete a play that long? And then when field position is actually an issue against say Oregon or Penn state, you know, that's not an e those aren't easy teams to get a huge play on. Yeah, I will say I'm like going back uh, a number of years here. Ohio State does do that quite quite often here. Uh, last year, last year, McCord McCord's last or longest one was 75 yards. Um, and I think there was only a, a couple of times between 2023 until like I went back to like 2012 there's only a couple of times Ohio State didn't get more than 75 yards, which, which funny enough, the the lowest um, or the shortest, longest uh, uh, reception for the year was that 2015 Buckeye team. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to go over. I'll go over honestly. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I I'm end up going over as well. For the record, I know I gave I laid out all the reasons why it's hard to do this, but I'm still going to go over. Yep. All right. Uh, James Peoples carries at twenty three and a half. Ooh. I'm going to go over simply because of the possibility that someone gets hurt. Yeah, and I. There is that possibility. Never, we never want to, um, of course, think about it. But there, there, there is that. But also, I mean, this is a totally different year, where where a lot of coaches are going to try to save the legs because I mean they're going to, players have the potential of playing more games here. You gotta gotta try to maybe not have as many reps here. So it, it's a blessing blessing to have Jud Judkins on the team here. Sure. Uh, to to help share share the load with Trey, but I mean, Ohio State got some other running backs, especially in those fourth quarters, as we predicted, where Ohio State's going to win by more than fifteen points. Sure, got a got a pair of pair of running backs uh, behind them that can that can 
take some more carry. So I'll go over. Yeah, I mean, again, though, the games are going to be shorter. So even if Ohio State puts in their second string sooner than they have in years past. That still does that won't necessarily equate to more touches. Because the games are going to be shorter. All right. Uh, Trey and Judd rushing yards combined at twenty three hundred and seventy five and a half. That's, that's a, a lot. That's huge. That's I'm sorry, a that's, lot. That's near. I, I, I did the math on this earlier. I think it's nearly 200 yards a game. Uh, two that, thirty. That is seven six divided I mean, I by twelve. One hundred ninety eight I mean, yards a game combined between under, the two of them. I understand why he's saying that. If you go back to twenty nineteen, Jared. Yeah, I mean that was when they just gave the ball to J.K. all the time. Sure, he had three three hundred one carries in that game <laughs> or in that year, and he had he had just over two thousand yards. But Master Teague got the ball 135 times for 789 yards. Sure. So it's ju- just shy of 2,800 yards. I, I can definitely I can definitely see that. I mean, was that really the last time that Ohio State really had? Um, well, I guess I guess Trey and Master Teague that year after were were our two head beasts too. But we never had never really had a good pair since 2019 to really share the load that well yeah i i so again though like you have you just you have to go under on this just because if yeah. one of them misses a game this is toasted yep and again less snaps this year i i i think i think the number's too big had the number been two thousand it had been like 1,999 and a half. I'd have been more enticed, but this number feels too big for me. I'm going under. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Our passing touchdowns at 28 and a half. That seems, seems like a lot. It seems like a lot. I'm going to go under with that one. I think it's a good, no, I, I disagree. I think it's a good number. Um, If you look at the numbers, it's basically two and a half touchdowns a game. Mm-hmm. If he gets, if he averages two and a half touchdowns a game, he gets this number. Some games he gets two, some games he gets three, and maybe against, you know, your less talented teams, he might get four or five to help bolster those numbers. Now it does need to be said that. Austin specifically says passing yards here. This would be an easy over if it simply said Howard touchdowns. Yes. Because I yes. think there's a decent chance he rushes for six or seven or eight this year. Um so I yeah, keep, it's I keep look. Go ahead. So, go ahead. What were you saying? Oh no, I was I was just I was just comparing in previous years, like your your gunslingers that we've seen in Previous years with with CJ Stroud and uh, and uh, Justin Fields uh, and uh, Dwayne Haskins, yeah, yeah, they they threw the ball all over, scored many many touchdowns. But I keep going back to that 2015 year, and it's just amazing how little offense came out of that that year. It, it's yeah. just ridiculous. 19 passing touchdowns that year that we have better offensive minds on the team this year i'm not <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. We, let's not, let's still, not get hung up on but, but to, nine years ago but to go to go back with a lot of what we were talking about with will howard not really expecting a lot from him there i, I definitely think passing like wise. he'll get like yeah 25 i think 25 is kind of the number i'm thinking of uh, for passing touchdowns, I, I think Ohio State's going to run all over, both with the running backs and with with Howard. Going to see a ton of ton of running yards, but 
Gangland asks a yeah. good question. What about the JT 2017 offense? Which was which was JT's last year, yes? Yeah. 18 it, was yeah, Howard, he, he, 19 was Fields. Yeah, and he dominated. Yeah, he, he was he was really good that year. He was really good. Yes. How many passing touchdowns? JT 35. See, I, I 35 and 12 on the ground. He ended up 47 total touchdowns. Yeah. I I, I think I've been comparing Howard to JT Barrett a lot. I think that he's a more I think Howard's a more competent passer now than JT Barrett was as a senior. And he has much better receiving targets. Now, granted, the games are going to be shorter mm-hmm. this year. But I think I, I think two and a half touchdowns a game is totally achievable. Uh, I'm I'm going over here. Campbell, JK, uh, McLaurin, Dixon, Victor. That, that, that was a, that was a good group there. That's yeah, a good absolutely. Group. Absolutely. But not as good as the group currently here. All right. Jordan Hancock. Next one here. Pass breakups. At five and a half. On it, I, I picked the over on this one just because <laughs> look, look at the other look at the other secondaries that uh, that the the opposing quarterback is going to try to throw it to. Yeah. I think Hancock might be the the biggest target there. So more targets towards him, more opportunities for pass breakups. That's that's my logic. Yeah, I, and I just I th- I just feel like this is an easy not not an easy number. Again, not that many snaps. Shorten games, yada yada yada. All the things I've said about other so, individual defensive stats last so year, far. So last year, yeah, last yeah. year we had two players that went over five and a half: Josh Proctor and Denzel Burke. Two other players had five: uh, Iggy and Ty Leak Williams, and or yeah, Williams. Ty Leak Williams had five. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yes, Josh Proctor was still here last year. He had an excellent season. He um, did. Yeah, I, I, I just feel like it's a, it's an achievable number. Um, it might be difficult. I, uh, the the short. I'm I'm going under. I'm going under. I actually, per my notes, uh, I'm changing this answer. Kyle just got Kyle going through the numbers, telling me only three defensive backs got it, got hit this mark last year. Changed my mind. I'm going under. All right. JT and and Sawyer have a combined sacks of 18 and a half last year. You want to guess what they had last year combined? Are you doing the entire season? Because Stoyer came oh, on uh, late in the postseason oh, last year. Oh, that's that is that is a very good point. Yeah. yeah. That, a lot of the numbers you're looking at, point. Kyle, are with a bowl game and a was it just the it would just be the bowl game, right? So yeah. it's only one extra All game. Right. I got it. I got it. All right. All right. Guess what they had? Not 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 season. nearly this, not not including the Missouri game, not, not, not against the Missouri, Missouri. not including it. Guess how nope. many they had combined? Significantly less than eighteen and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah. Now, granted, the secondary so- is going to be Sawyer, better. Sawyer Sawyer had three sacks against Missouri, and JT had a sack against Missouri as well. But other than that, JT had four sacks throughout the regular season. And Jack Sawyer had three and a half. Teams don't let Ohio State get a bunch of sacks. Yeah. Straight up. It they game plans like, for it. Unless your last name is Bosa or uh, or Young. Well, because of but 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 teams totally changed how they played us because of Bosa and Young. That's the point. 
teams totally yeah. when go watch any Big Ten game post Chase Young. No one in the Big Ten tries just like has their quarterback sit in the pocket. They either hit the pocket and it's gone in two seconds or they're rolling the pocket. Teams simply don't sit in the pocket, not Big Ten teams at least, don't simply sit in the pocket against Ohio State. Uh-huh. And right, again, interesting. reduce snaps, yada, yada, yada. I'm going under here. This next one's interesting here because I keep I'm keep going back and forth about this one. Ohio Sam State Darnold tackle, found out, too. Yep. Ohio State tackle leader. Ta- <laughs> Ohio State tackle leader leader tackles at 87 and a half. Ohio State kind of goes like looking at recent years, they kind of go up and and lower uh, the leader at that 87 and a half. So it kind of goes up and down and it's not like it's a particular position or anything because there's some years it's, it's the linebacker Uh, other years. It's it's the safety. Yeah. So I just think because of, I'll say you're not, I'll say defense is not going to get as many opportunities on the field there. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of three and outs or, only seven plays, not many opportunities. I got to go under. I got to go under here. Uh, Gangland asks specifically under Knowles. So that's only the past three seasons. Who's been the tackle leader and how many tackles? All right. So last year, 83 tackles was Steel Chambers. Yep. 2022, Tommy Pickles Eichenberg had 120 tackles. Yeah. Again, again, this, this, I'm not. I, this is total. I'm yeah, not yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I'm not going to figure out. I'm not yeah, going to yeah, do that's the math fair. on. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Hickman had 98 in 2021. So linebacker, linebacker, safety. Um. Yeah. I again, I, I feel like the tackles are going to be hyper spread out this year. Yep. So I'm exactly. going under so here. Under. Yep. All right. Going to move a little. Okay. So linebackers here, and 21 Hickman was under Combs. Um, no. Okay. No. Right. No, he's no 21 was was Combs. Was it? Oh, uh, oh no, 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 no. He's right. He's right. He's right. This yeah, is yeah, Noel's yeah. third year. Third year. We're starting right. Noel's third. He hasn't been here for three years. We're starting his third year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mo- moving on. We're going to move through these a little bit quicker here, Jer. Ohio State punt kickoff return touchdowns Over. set at point five. It's finally going to happen this year, Kyle. Why? We're going over. Give me a reason. Give me a reason. We're going to get a lot more punts. Get, get, forget about kickoffs. Forget about kickoffs. Ohio State's not going to get that many kickoffs and kickoff. The rules around kickoffs have been altered to the point that you're just you. No one returns them in any great frequency anymore. Like the rules are changed. They you know, the 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 people who control the rules have decided that kickoffs are too dangerous. They're right. For the record, they're right. But we need to forget about kickoffs. We need to focus on punts. This is, this is Ohio State's going to force a lot of punts this year. They're going to force a lot of uh, long field punts. So not ones that sort of get popped up and they try and drop it in the five. I think they're going to get a lot of long field punts, which will sometimes those get kicked a little bit more directly, which gives the returner more of a chance. And it's also just a shorter distance for the returner to then take it to the end zone. If you want a good opportunity to punt return, you want a dominant, no nonsense, three and out style defense. And that's what you have that. And there's just a lot of skill talent on. There's a lot of skill on the team right now. It's been 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, I know. This is the year. 
we're due. I'm going under. I'm going under. Uh, over under one and a half season until they adopt the NFL's kickoff rules. I'm shocked that they haven't already. I'm going under. Now, it might not be implemented in one and a half years, but they'll decide to implement it in one and a half, under one and a half years. Right. Moving on here. Ohio State defensive touchdowns at 4.5. Uh, feels Ohio, high. Ohio State's Ohio State's done really well, really well with uh, defensive touchdowns. Yeah, reduced Good opportunity. Up. I'm just gonna say reduced opportunity under. I've already made my reduced opportunity argument like 20 times. I'm just gonna say reduced opportunity under. And I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pick over. I'll pick over on this one here. All right. Ohio State longest field goal at 50 and a half. I say under. I'm going to say over. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. We're not. We're only counting regular season, right? Yeah. I'm going to change my answer. I'm going to say under. All right. Get, getting those getting those good weather and or dome games late in the season can really help this number. But if we're only counting the first 12 games. I'm going to go under. All right. Before we go to the next one, we're going to take our second ad break here. Uh, so yeah, blah, 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 blah. Join, join, join us over at Patreon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all right. We'll be right back after, <laughs> after this uh, second commercial break. All right, Kyle. Um, what is the next question? Ibuka receiving yards per game, averaging 78 and a half. Uh, I like it. He's not going to get the ball seven or he's not going to get 80 yards every game. But I think once you average it out in the end, I think this is totally achievable. Um, So uh, 78, 78.5 times 12, 90, 940. I feel like a Mecca can get a thousand yards this year. I feel like that's totally possible and totally achievable. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, I'll go over. I'll go over as well. Offensive touchdowns by players not named Judkins Henderson, Howard, Abuka Smith and Tate set at 10 and a half. Okay. So who do we have left? So I, he doesn't include uh, Ennis, which I think is nope. maybe an interesting omission. Um, I think Ennis or is Tate. good. I think Ennis is good for a few. He, he, or Tate. He does it. Yeah, he does. He includes Tate. Oh, he did. Sorry. It's the yep. last name. That last one. Okay. So no Ennis, uh, no tight ends. So you get uh, no you Devin. Look, no to Devin get maybe Brown. a couple combined touch. So if we get, if we say like four from Tate, combined three from Scott and Kick Merrick, that gets us up to seven. You mean Ennis, not Tate. Excuse me, Ennis. I meant, yes, Ennis. Then let's say a combined. One, let's say combine two touchdowns from Rogers or Antwi or any of the other like non core top four wide receivers, or maybe one of the walk ons or current walk ons who are having really good camps. Yeah. Um, you want to know Ennis's uh, career stats is at Ohio State? It's not relevant. Well, it, this, it, this is this is it, his it, year. It, it, no, it's just funny because he had his stat. Where was it? Was against Purdue. He is he has one catch for fifty eight yards in one touchdown. Yeah. So, so whenever he gets the ball, he scores. Jared, I'm just saying. I I, I think <laughs> the ten and a half is very interesting because he excluded Ennis. 
who I think is good for four or five. He doesn't include the tight ends. And if we just say the tight end position as a whole gets three, then we're looking at, uh, you know, three or four even. So, you know, we're looking at like eight to eight or so touchdowns from Innis and the tight ends. We get some junk time from running backs. I, 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 I think 10 and a half uh, running touchdowns from any quarterbacks who aren't Howard. I I think you can add to this list and I think there's one or two available there. James Peoples touchdowns, Sam William Dixon touchdowns, you know, again, maybe combined between those two might equal two or three, but you know, you add two or three here, you add four here, you add four here you had one or two here. I, I think we can, I think we can hit that 10 mark. And then this number becomes way more achievable if any of these players get hurt. So this feels like a pretty easy over, in my opinion. I, this is a, this is a great number because my number I had was like nine. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going under with, with this one here, Jared. All right. All right. Uh, Scott catches 27 and a half. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to say Jared, but this is not the year of the tight end. It uh, is not. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go under. Yeah. I originally wrote over in the notes. I've changed my mind. Um, it, I just don't even know necessarily how many how, how many snaps is uh, what's the snap share going to look like between Scott and Kick Merrick. I don't even feel like we know that answer right now. Um, this is two and a third catches per game. And like we all know that Ohio State minus last year, which was an anomaly, which was actually the year of the tight end. Ohio State can go a month just forgetting that their tight end exists. We've seen them do it in the past. Um, yeah, I'm going to go under here. I feel like the number is like yeah. 23, so, personally. The last two years was wasn't over for that, but you had to go back to 2017 to get a tight end over that 27 and a half, and that was Marcus Ball yeah. in 2017. So, yeah, I'm going to go under. Yeah, the last Especially player to hit, the last like, player to hit like this Rucker, number, whose name Rucker isn't Cade Stover, never got over that. Rucker never got over that number. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Cody Simon, tackle for losses seven and a half. I I've already done my rant about individual defensive players and how their stats are going to be from an individual perspective down this year. Yeah, I'm sticking with that analysis. Uh, that analysis, I think Ohio State's going to rack up a, a lot of tackle for losses this year. I just think it's going to be spread across a ton of players. Yeah, I agree. I originally wrote over, but yeah, I, I don't know why I was thinking that. Yeah, I'm going to go under. I'm you hadn't under heard well. me preach a thousand times about <laughs> the lack of opportunity for yeah, defensive yeah. players this year. Sony Styles sacks plus force fumbles plus interceptions all combined for nine and a half. As much as I love Sony Styles and he's going to be all over the field, all over. And with everything else that Jared just mentioned, I'm going under. Yeah. Um individual if you'd have given if you had given me like tackle for losses as a fourth category here. I'd have taken it. But just these three categories. uh, Lack of opportunity under. All right. Uh, Where are we at? Here we go. Most state plays of 35 plus yards given up. At six and a half. So over or under six. And a half times, Ohio State gives up 35 or more yards. 
I think it'll be interesting to see what type of defense Knowles runs this year. His first year at Ohio State, he went very aggressive. He went very give them nothing, which led to a lot of big plays. At Ryan Day's direction, he switched things up last year and he went a little more bend but don't break. This year, does he have the talent to do what he originally wanted to do? which is to go total rigid or is he going to stay a little bit back? You know, which, which Knowles defense are we going to get this year? Um, you know, I think he wants to be aggressive. I think he wants to give teams nothing, but maybe he didn't have the personnel to do that in his first two years here. But now with like an elite pairing, at safety and an elite cornerback trio. He feels a little bit more comfortable letting the linebackers and the defensive line play aggressively and just give the defense nothing. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go under here. Uh, you know, high state was really good at limiting big plays last year. Again, this is just through the first regular season games. So, you know, we don't have to worry about, you know, a Alabama, Georgia type team, you know, adding to this total in the playoffs. So, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go under here. I, I feel, I feel pretty good about it. And again, this is where the reduced opportunity helps us. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go over uh, mainly because, I think you're going to see a few of those be given up by the non-starters later later in the in the game there. That's a decent assessment. Yeah. I'll go over cuz that's I mean that if they if they can hold teams to 6 times or less, that's of 35 yards or less, that's that is elite. That is elite level. Well, 35 or more, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Ohio State final college football playoff rankings at two and a half. So they're their first or second in the final rankings here. Now, the I mean, rankings meaning the playoff seating. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. And we're saying under, the, mathematically under, not ranking under, right? We're yeah, saying the number, under the equals number. one or two and over equals Correct. three. Or, okay. Correct. I mean, the Vegas, I mean, if this was Vegas, you, you should take the over. <laughs> like this is, I, I, I got to pick the over there. Like it's more likely that Ohio State will get third or higher than they, uh, than they would first or second. I mean, they have to run the tables, which they can. But I mean, we we discussed it um in last one of our last week episodes about our predictions for the Big Ten and the national scope there. I it's yeah I it's more likely that Ohio State will not get one or two in, in my mind. I think they will, and I say this because I think that it's already been primed in the. Who, who, who's going to take it from them? Honest to God, even if Florida State runs the the rest of the table, if you win the Big Ten, you're going to get first or second. Who else yes. is going to who else is going to do it? Utah, Clemson, Florida State, Boise, Memphis. What conference champions Outside of the SEC, because again, I, like I, I feel like it's real chalk, real obvious to say. The first seed and the second seed are going to be the Big Ten and the SEC. So who gets ahead? Who, you know, who from the ACC or the Big 12 or Lord knows where else? is going to get seated above an SEC or Big Ten champion. So to me, yeah. the question oh, here is does Ohio State win the Big Ten? And I'm saying yes. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
our, FSU uh, would be lucky completion. to go without three losses the way they look yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Howard completion percentage, 65 and a half percentage under, under, over, over under, under, over, over, over. Oh, oh. I said what I said. All right. Trey Henderson averaging 6.25 yards per ga- uh, per rush. That feels that feels big. I'm going to go feels over. like a lot. I'll go over. I'm going to go under. It just feels like a lot. I feel like even if you're if you get five, you're amazing. Um, it just it feels like a lot. That's that's it. It just it feels like a big number. I'm going under. Next up, Ohio sorry, State. I, sorry, I, I was just trying to find what his average was last year, but go on. Sacks allowed. 17 and a half. This feels like an over to me. Sacks allowed. So Ohio State allowing more than 17 sacks for the year. I'm going that to go is correct, under. Sir. I'm going to go I'm going to go under because like they Howard's not going to they're not going to expect Howard to be needing to make plays here. He's going to get the ball out quicker or he's going to run the ball. Well, I, the ru- the running I'm, of the ball I'm going to go under. I'm going to go Sometimes under. the running of the ball leads to sacks. And while I do think this offensive line is going to be better this year than they were last year, I'm not going to swear that they're going to allow under a sack and a half per game, which is kind of what this number is. Um, well, I did by, uh, let me do it again. 18 divided by 12. Yeah, that is, that is in fact one and a half. So it's exactly one and a half sacks per game. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go over on that. I think it's more like two per game. Okay. So 24. Yeah. I mean, recent, I mean, recent years, uh, does me well, um, favors me here. But then as soon as I go past CJ, uh, go back beyond CJ's Stroud, uh, yeah, doesn't, doesn't look all that great, but we're, I digress. We're going to move on. Uh, Phil Reese, uh, Austin says that he is his goat. Uh, tackles at 10 and a half. You know, junk time tackles are what they will be. Um, he's probably the third will. Um, Sonny Styles and CJ Hicks are probably, you know, 1A, 1B at the will position. Avril Reese is, is third. We're looking at junk yeah, I, time tack, but but it's it's but he's also going to play. Oh, actually, I mm, I may have just changed my mind because I bet yeah. he's going to be playing special teams. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go gonna over. Go under with I changed one. my mind. I changed my mind live on show. I forgot about special teams. He might get, he might get these numbers on special teams. All right, I'm going to go over. Ohio State players with forced turnovers set at 12 and a half. I didn't do my research on this one. That feels that feels like a lot. Um, I mean, because you're essentially saying every single starter. Plus two more guys force a turnover. I'm just looking real quick. It feels it feels like a lot. Um, yeah. Last year, last year, uh, it was 11. Yeah. Last year was 11. So, uh, I'm going to go over. I'll go over. Oh. I, I, a lot, a lot, a lot of playmakers. I know that kind of doesn't, isn't on the same page as what we mentioned before that they're not going to have as many opportunities for tackles, for making plays. But I, I just think this team is too talented to not cause a lot of turnovers here so I'll, it's just that I'm it's going to take over 13 individuals that need to do it 
Uh, Sam there Williams. 18, there was 18, 18 players in 2021. Okay. Just, reduced. Just going to say that. 11, 11 reduced last year opportunity. And 18, 11 last year and 18 brief before. Reduced opportunity. All right. Uh, Sam Williams Dixon touches at 15 and a half. Touches? Touches. I feel like that's totally junk time achievable. I mean, it's touches, which. Yeah. It's the problem is, is that he's the fourth guy. So like maybe they look to red shirt him. That's that's the issue here. Um, I'm going to go under only because. I feel like it's I feel like Ohio State doesn't go. Quite frankly, doesn't go to their third running back all that often, let alone their fourth running back. Um. I know last couple of years have been different because of injury issues, but historically speaking, Ohio State doesn't go to, to their third, let alone their fourth running back all that much. Um, and I think there's also going to be a lot of carries by quarterbacks this year. This is going to look more, I've said this a dozen times this offseason, this is going to look a little bit more like a Ryan Day, or excuse me, a little bit more like an Urban Meyer offense as opposed to a Ryan you know, Day offense this I year, I feel. I'm changing. I'm changing mine. I'm going to go over. Okay. I'm going to go over here. Other than the 2020 year, which limited the number of plays, Ohio State's had four, even five running backs with, uh, with uh, 15 or more carries. And every year, minus, I think you have to go back to 2017, other than the 2020 year. So I'm going to go over. If, if if he's the fourth running back, yeah, I think 16 carries is definitely reasonable. I'll go over. All right. Uh, Tate catches. Tate with 42 and a half catches. That's, that's a lot. Yeah, 2020 does it count. Yeah. Uh that's a, 42 it's a and a half point. is that's a that's a lot. 42 and a half. I mean, last year, other than Marvin Harrison, no, nobody got uh 43. Uh Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka uh were neck and neck in 2022. And the year before that, we just had a three-headed monster with JSN, Wilson, and Olave, uh, it's it's tough. It's tough. Are, are we going to have that twenty twenty one year where we're going to have, uh, where we're going to have the ball spread out that much among the four or five receivers here? It's it's tough. That that's why I got under. I mean, it, I could totally see this. It'd be ecstatic for Tate to get over. Uh, 42 catches here, but I just, my gut says under for this one. Okay. What say you? I'm going over. Uh, this is essentially three and a half per game. So I feel like that's achievable. I don't feel like with Marvin Harrison Jr. last year, like basically that's sometimes between Marvin Harrison Jr. and Cade Stover, I feel like that was the, the only people on the field that McCord was able to find. I don't feel like it's going to be quite so singular this year. Uh, so I'm going to go. I feel I feel like it's spread a little bit more. I'm going to go over. All right. All right. Uh, Guys were open a lot last I'm year, but the responsible these. for delivering uh, it wasn't very All capable. Right. I agree. All right. I'm going to finish these real quick here. So Ty Leak and Hamilton total tackles combined at 97 and a half. That's a lot. Feels like a lot. That's, you know, obviously like nearly 50 a piece. Feels like a, a reduced opportunity under. Uh, last I'll, year they had. Last year, Jared, they had. Uh, you'll be surprised to hear this. At 95 last year. Yeah. I, I, it's not, I don't think this was but a I got, bad. I got under, I got under as well. 
yeah, it's just reduced. Oppor- I think there's again going to be reduced opportunity this year. Did you, um, Brandon Ennis question you skipped? Uh, I did. Sorry. Uh, Brandon Ennis, 27 and a half touches. I got under for that one. Made St. Marys as the tape one before. I'm going to go over. I think he's going to be more involved than people are giving him credit for. All right. And this would be an uh, easy way to work, uh, would be an easy way to work into the run game, sweeps, etc. I totally agree. Uh, receivers with 100 plus yards against Ohio State at three and a half. Under. Guess how many, guess how many there was last year? Um, during the regular season specifically? Because I feel, I feel like Missouri had maybe one or two. No? None. Yes, sir. He had zero. Okay. Uh, uh, zero. I'm gonna say zero. That is correct. All right. Yeah, secondary is too strong this year. Going under. Yeah, because I looked at every game. I looked at every game. Went to the, went to the box score. See who, uh, who had the most yardage there. Uh, by the way, so Missouri only had that one guy had one catch for 50 yards and the other guy had 43 yards. So not even close. I think the closest that I saw, I think it was, was it, I think it was Youngstown State. Youngstown State had a, no, it wasn't. Uh, yeah. Maybe it was Notre Dame. They had, I forget, there, there, was, two, there was two games where they had, a player that had like in the 80s. It was like 88 yards or something like that. There was two, there was two games. So, uh, oh, it was uh, Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky had a kid, uh, Corley, eight yards, uh, eight, eight catches for 88 yards. And, um, and I think the Michigan game, um, there was a guy there that had in the 80, oh, the Loveland. Loveland had 88 yards in that game. Technically well. not a... Re- not why well, he's a receiver. He's not a wide receiver, but he's a receiver. Yeah. Yeah, you you are right. Yeah, Western Western Kentucky did throw the ball uh quite a bit. Uh actually not as no, they actually didn't throw it 50 times. They only threw it 37 times. But anyway, getting sidetracked. Uh next next one here. Um uh, I'm I'm going under for that one. Ohio State rushing yards per game, 231 and a half yards per game. That's that is a huge leap up compared to what they've done in recent years. But I like it. Huge. I'm going over. Cause I remember when I said before, because what what was the um the combined he had for Judkins and Trey? 230 2375. Uh 2375 divided by 12 was essentially 200 yards per game. But here's the thing. I think, go back, gonna, I think we're going to see go back a to lot. 2019, 2019 since Ohio state had that kind of success. You have the best running back duo that Ohio state has had ever. That's and we are going to be bringing back the read option this year. We have a running quarterback this year. We have two running quarterbacks this year. If you include Devin Brown, um, I think you're going to see a team that is going to be, again, much more of an Urban Meyer team than a Ryan Day team. And Urban or that Ryan Day, other than his first year as head coach at Ohio State, other than that one, Ohio State wasn't even close to being uh, 200 yards a game on average under Ryan Day other than his first year. 2021, it was 180. 2022 was 190. I guess I was closer. And last year, I want to say average 138 yards on the ground. Last year sucked uh, in a lot of different ways. But 
Yeah. The, I'm again, going, I'm going under. I'm going over. I think they hit this. All right. It's a big right, number. And, I acknowledge, but I think they hit it. Yep. Yeah. And the last one, dams we give for the whole state of Michigan. Over under 0.5. Yes. And of course, we are going under. Kyle. As is tradition. As is tradition. That is the end of today's show. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I do not because the crew. Oh, they just finished. There you go. There we go. The crew are your league cup champions for the first time in in uh club history after defeating uh la uh fc and, and the championship there yes now uh, this deja is not vu, the mls deja vu from last year deja vu from last year where they yes. beat la fc for the mls championship yes uh kyle if and we were to store they must have scored two quick goals uh just recently because uh because <laughs> it was like well into the second half and i saw that the crew uh or the la tied it one one and oh yeah they scored two they scored two in uh in extra time there it uh, is kyle if, if we weren't 11 minutes over i yep. i would ask you to explain to everyone what the difference is between an mls cup and a league cup but i guess they're just gonna have to google it because just google it yep be, because we're already over. Kyle, is that it for Kyle's Corner? That's it. Tonight's ending music brought to you by a Columbus-based band called Super Destroyer. That is all one word, Super Destroyer. And with that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Super Destroyer. Super Destroyer.